There's a lot of what ifs in this world. There's a lot of I could haves in this world. There's a lot of I wish I would have in this world. And there's also a lot of I'm glad I did and a lot of I'm so thankful that I could and, and I'm so blessed because I did. But I really believe that the difference between those two different groups and the difference between the graduate that will make it through the trials and difficulties and the woes of life and that, that wanted to do right and wanted to begin and had dreams and hopes of doing something and didn't make it will large part be on this truth. In the book of Matthew, please, chapter number 25, the book of Matthew, chapter number 25. I'll read a few verses just for the sake of time. As we are familiar with this passage, I'll explain a little bit. But um, just there from verse number 24, please. Chapter 25, verse 24. Recently, I got the privilege to graduate from uh, Howells Anderson College with a master's degree. And... Uh, and I got to receive that diploma from the same hands as uh, I received my high school diploma uh, a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm very blessed and I'm very thankful to, again, I want to reiterate, just uh, I never would have imagined in my whole world, in my whole lifetime, yet to be where I'm at today. And I'm so blessed. I'm very humbled. And I feel very nervous uh, speaking to you this evening in English, uh, by, all hand, by all means. Uh, but I'll try my best uh, to not let out some Spanish words uh, through the message, all right? Um, every time I go preach at, co at the college, the, the, the young people shout out names like burrito, taco, salsa. And I don't know if just looking at me, I inspire them hunger, or I don't know. But, <laughs> but, but I hope I can be a blessing to you tonight. I really do. Verse number 24, the Bible says, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou, thou hast that is thine. This servant had the same opportunities as the other, had the same master as the other. And something happened in him. Despite the fact that he, he thought he knew the master maybe better than the others. I'm sure in his mind he said, you know, I, these guys acted foolishly. These guys just, you know, they didn't even think twice about who you really are. But I know who you are. And he said, I went to go hide that talent that, that you gave me because I was afraid. And that's exactly what I want to share with you tonight. That statement he said, so powerful yet so simple. I was afraid. Father, please bless tonight's message. I know we've been in prayer. And even to this point, Lord, you, there's no doubt that you are here and blessing our service through the singing Father, please help me, Lord, as I just share this simple but yet so powerful truth. Help us, Lord. Help me to communicate your truth, and you may be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. Franklin D. Roosevelt once said in his first inaugural address, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Sometimes in life, in your journey, will lead you to dark places, Dark caves, if you would. And sometimes those very dark places and those very dark caves that you fear so much to enter holds the greatest treasures you will ever encounter in your life. Another man named Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, fear defeats more people than any other thing in the world. Fear is the thief of all the dreams. Not knowing what will happen tomorrow. Not knowing what I will do with my life tomorrow. Not knowing what will come. The sense of the very beginning of time. It was fear that came in between as an obstacle between man and God. In Genesis chapter 3 we see Adam and Eve falling into sin. And their first reaction. Their first emotion encountered after sin was fear. 
And they expressed it to God and they said, we feared, we, we were scared, and which, which is why we went and hid ourselves. And really it's a foolish thing to say that we would try to pretend to hide from God. But fear has always led us to do foolish things in our life. Abraham went to Egypt when he was never supposed to go to Egypt. But he went to Egypt because he was, he was, he was overcome by fear of hunger. And he left and went to a place, and we know the consequences that came about that one simple decision. And not only the decision to go to Egypt, where he gained servants and where he exposed his, his nephew to the things of Egypt and all those things that came. But even there in Egypt was governed by fear and lied about his wife. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness because of fear. And in Numbers chapter 13, they were faced with the opportunity to enter into the promised land. They were so close, yet so far, because of fear. And 10 of them came back and said, it's impossible, we can't do it. It's too, these people are too giant, and, and it's just, it, we're going to get slaughtered. And no, it's impossible, no matter how much those two people, uh, men said, let's, let's go, God is with us. The fear overcame everyone. And the consequences came to everyone. God does not want us to be governed by fear. In 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter number 1, verse 7, we know the famous uh, verse that says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Fear is an obstacle that has made kings and great armies retreat to defeat. It paralyzes and determines and alters our destinies at times. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, the Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Fear is to the kingdom of darkness what faith is to God. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Fear is the evidence of failure. It is only by faith we truly are overcomers. Fear is what can destroy us from within. The psalmist said it best when he said, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. It's not if I am afraid, it's what time, when I am afraid. See, God over and over in the Bible has has always been one to tell us, be thou not afraid, fear not, be of good courage. It's almost as if God knows that our greatest weakness, our greatest foe, the the one thing that can keep us from completing his will and fulfilling his will and enjoying what all the blessings he has for us is fear. Fear of what we don't know. Fear of failing God. Fear of those that will fail us. Romans 8, 8, verse 15, the Bible says, For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You see, this world has many reasons why to fear. I remember sitting in my graduating uh, class of, of five uh, students, and we were graduating high school, and, and there were so many things that, that had, were going through my mind as I, I would have been graduating with a class of over 150, close to 200 graduates just a year before. And now I found myself with five, four other students graduating in, 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 in our church, and I knew what God wanted for my life. I knew that God had called me to serve Him, but there were so many expectations in my life. I didn't know what next, what would happen if I would be able to make it. I was not only intimidated by college and preparing myself to serve God, but I was intimidated by all the things that I had to change, that God had to change in me. I I was just fearful that that I would not make it. I had already heard of testimonies and others that tried and failed, and and I was just overcome. And at that time in our home, our our parents, my parents had had split, and and we were going through that trial and and difficulties. I had to work uh, two jobs during high school to not only help pay for my school, but I also had to help pay for rent 
went at home with my mother and, and still plan and hope to be able to go to Bible college. There was so many uncertainties. I didn't know whether to go to college or stay behind to help my mother with rent and help her. I didn't know what to do. And all I knew is that God had called me. But to be honest, no matter how much I put a face of, I got everything, I'm good, I, I'm in control. But it was inside me, just this little kid, scared to death that I would not make it. Scared to death that I, I, I just was going to blow it. I was going to fail my parents. I was going to fail those that had invested in my life. And I was just gripped with fear. And I remember going home that night and grabbing a hold of my diploma and telling my mother, Mom, if, if, this, is any, if, if this is the only thing that I do right, if I mess up, if I, if I fail, if this is the one thing that I get to do, I want to give it to you. And I want to say thank you for everything you've done. Just overwhelmed, and, I'm, and, I, and I say this because, not because it's a good thing. To be honest with you, I had just been saved since 16 years of age. Christianity was new to me. I was trying to learn the faith. I was trying to learn to serve God, and now I'm graduating. Now it's off to college. I was afraid. This servant was afraid. He admitted it. He said, I, I was afraid. What simple words, right? Just, I was afraid. How many of us, how many of us would admit that so many things that we've missed out on, so many things that we've not done for God, so many things that we wish we would have, so many things that we could have done for the Lord, for ourselves, for our homes, for our family, for the sake of God, but fear gripped our heart, and over and over again, fear will continue to control what we wish we could do. Unless we understand, we should never be afraid of God or His will. As pastor says over and over, the only thing we should fear of the will of God is to miss it. The fear of the Lord is not the same as being scared. How much do we lose out on in our lives? Just this, as this servant did, so many blessings. So much was hanging in the balance, but he responded. But what he was honest truth, he said, I was scared. I thought I knew you. I thought I knew who you were. I thought this is what you would have wanted me to do, and I was scared. And he missed out on the opportunity to hear, thou good and faithful servant, because he was gripped with fear. Boy, we've seen our nation. We've seen people that we know that I consider to be better Christians than myself by far, be overcome by fear. And so many times you and I can admit to being scared of what is next and what will happen when things change and God allows circumstances to take different courses. I think of Martha and Mary when they sent notice to, to Jesus to tell him, hey, Lazarus, our brother, the one you love is sick. They were certain for sure that he would drop it everything they were doing and run and come and heal Lazarus. But God said, no, 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 no. He said, this sickness is going to be used for the glory of God. And just like that, from verse number three to verse number four, God altered their life. God changed everything about them and submitted them and trusted and submitted them to fear, submitted them to being scared, submitted them to being hurt, to crying. And Jesus was not uh, uh, scared of what was going on. He knew what was in, in, in control. He knew what was going to happen, just like God knows today in our life. Amen. Fear is terrible. How many times at night we hear a noise at the door and the window the dark barking, and we send our wife to go check it out. <laughs> you know, we come down the stairs, you know, with, with whatever looks like a gun, you know, a shoe, you know, because we're gripped with fear. How many times we've been in situations where someone breaks an announcement, or we hear of something very hurtful, or someone that maybe fell, or something that just grips us with, Lord, what next? That's why the psalmist said, what time I am afraid. Amen. I will trust in thee. Fear will rob us of our greatest opportunities. Young people, listen to me. 
Fear will rob us of our greatest opportunities. No matter how much talent you have, no matter how much, you know, people behind you, no matter how much uh, will and, and money or whatever you may have, fear will rob us of our greatest opportunities. Don't be governed by fear. Decide that no matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, the Lord is with me as God told Jeremiah, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, because I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. No matter what comes your way, just understand and decide, no matter what it is, no matter how dark a cave, no matter how ugly a scene, no matter how much it hurts, I choose to believe in God. I choose to say, no matter what, but if God be for us, who shall be against us and determine that you will not be governed by fear because fear itself will take us and rob us from our greatest opportunities. Fear will place us where we should never be. If you notice, after the Lord spoke to this man, his destiny changed very quickly. And the Lord said, very grippling so, he said, verse 25, and he said, I hid this, and, and thou hast, that is in thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I can imagine that servant that morning didn't think he would hear those words from his master. But fear will always place us where we never want to be. Fear has led Christians astray. Fear has led better people than you and I maybe will ever be. They've gone someplace that they don't wish they'd be, in some gutter, in some corner, in some bar, in some home, in some street, all alone. That one day they were sitting right where you were. That one day they were in church singing specials, it, uh, participating, but somehow in some place, in some moment in their life, they allowed themselves to be governed by fear. Number three. Fear will take away from you more than you ever want to give up. More than you ever want to give up. You see, the Lord told him, take what was given to him. Take it away and give it to somebody else. I can remember Achan, the story of him grabbing all that treasure and thinking that it was going to prosper probably his family. And maybe fear snuck in there and thinking, I need this to help my family. I need this to, 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 to better my family. And he let God out of his, out of his trust and, and he trusted in these things and he brought it and hid it under his tent. And then I, when they came for his kids and when they came for his family, I guarantee you that at that moment he was wishing, I give it back. Can you take it back? I don't want any of it. I don't want one penny of it. I'd rather have my kids. I'd rather have my wife. I'd rather have all the things that I have that it costs way more than money. I'll give it back. But it was too late. And let me tell you, if you allow fear to govern your life and your heart, if you don't uh, dive into this word and, and the church and miss and not the, the church services and, and as much as you can because the Bible will give us courage, the Bible will give us security, the Bible will give us peace when there is no other peace, when no one else knows what to do. The Bible will lead us. It'll be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and that's what we need. But when you exclude God... It will take away from you more than you ever want to give. I promise you, I've seen good people lose things that they love so much. And they would do everything they could to take it back. But it's too late. Because they allowed fear to govern their life. Lastly, fear will make us into who 
we never want to become. I'm sure that servant that morning never dreamed that he would end the day hearing the words, unprofitable servant. I don't believe none of you think that one day you're going to end up a mess. I'm confident that each and every one of you has high hopes and dreams. That you want to do what's right. You want to live what's right. You want to do right. But if you allow fear ever to get in the way between you and God, you will turn into somebody you never want to become. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Paul did say it best when he said, If God be for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And it is in that love, the Bible says, that casteth out fear. We went to school, my wife and I, with several kids our age. And just recently we found out that one of those students he ended up somewhere in Mexico. And they had to go and identify what body parts they found. He sat next to us in class. I remember him. I never would have imagined. But when you allow fear to govern your life, it will make you people that you never wish you became. This serpent simply said, I was afraid. See, you're going to have to go to college here in a few short months. Fear will keep you away from college. Fear will keep you from doing right. Fear will keep you from living right. Fear will keep you from marrying right. Fear will keep you from anything good that God has for you. Don't be governed by fear. Be an overcomer. Amen. 